you know, there's a couple things here that, and there's some new people here, and this stuff, to walk into, you can walk out of here and be completely caught up. I mean, it's not like, you know. however, you do have, I realize you've got 80 pages of stuff that you're looking at, and it, it's got all kinds of weird stuff in there, like, you know, and, 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 and as I said, I will be more than happy if you see Joan to come here on a Saturday night or a Friday night, whatever convenient for you, and sit with you and go over all the pages for you so that you can understand. The, the, the reason you have all of these pages is because I will not say anything. I don't think it's fair to say anything to people without being able to document it scientifically. Everything that I tell you, I will document. I mean, there's a lot of people that write books and stuff, and it's all, it's all good and it's interesting, and they give ideas as to why this is happening and, and why that's happening. But, you know, on the other hand, they may be wrong. And I, I'm not telling you to believe anything. I'm just saying this is the basis of why I've been saying the things that I do. And, and so I give it to you, and then, then you make a decision. One of the things that we're talking about, and, I, and I, I need you also because I'm going to start flowing in this direction from Pegasus to Apollo and so forth and so on. Well, one of the things that you have to keep in mind, we talked about putting the green light up, you know, and when you see all of this lunacy that goes on in the world today, and the perfect example of it is what's going on in Washington now, I mean, you know, wild stuff. But, I mean, that's, that's a small part. I mean, when you think about the White House and Clinton and, and sex and all this stuff, that's nothing as compared to what happened to the Soviet Union a few years ago. I mean, that whole thing disappeared. It just went away. And that was in stone. You know, that would never happen. You are now coming deeper and deeper under the influence of a planet that has the reputation in astrological circles of turning everything upside down. It totally wipes out tradition. Everything that is traditional, it blows it apart. And the reason is because of itself. It's erratic. It revolves in the opposite direction of all the other planets. It sends out magnetic fields that are not concentric and in the ways that most magnetic fields are. They're all over the place. And the name of the planet is Uranus. And what I wanted to tell you, which is interesting, too, that you want to keep in mind, Uranus is the green planet. It is green. Let me tell you one other thing that's interesting, is when you look at Uranus, which is now the controlling influence and is becoming more and more influential over the affairs of the earth, um, there's a part in the Bible where Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The word heaven is used. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's fine. This is little known fact. That word, that that. Uh, New Testament is written in Greek. And the Greek word for heaven is which uh, comes into English, Uranus. So basically what was being said there is the kingdom of Uranus is at hand. And that's why, you know, you see so much of this upheaval so much uh, of, 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 of the things that are changing. Look at, look at, I mean, even, look what you're sitting, you're listening to me. Can you imagine such a thing? A radical like me, and you're sitting here listening on a Sunday morning yet. <laughs> and, and if you think, is that, my God, what am I doing? You're listening to this crazy person. And here you are listening to me, so how have you changed in the way you think? Well, you're actually sitting inside of the brain of God, which is the universe. And if that brain is undergoing the same change that your brain underwent, what is going to happen? It's very, very exciting. And it is happening. And the scientists are seeing it happen. And Hubble is seeing it happen. And, and, it's, and it's on all of the, you know, the television and so forth. And you're seeing, you're seeing the changes and the way, you know, the confusion and so forth. The traditional things. There's people saying, we've got to get back to traditional values. It's not, what? There won't be any. There's, there, there is no way. It, it's not possible. Because those things are being upset by the thought patterns 
that are generated by electromagnetism. Which your brain works on electromagnetism, the electromagnetic fields, the angles of light. And they're coming right now from the place of the green, which is Uranus. So there's a lot of crazy things going on. But this is what's happening. With all of this, you're sitting here, and we're talking about it. And I've, and I've never, and you know, I've never asked you to believe anything. I'm not asking you to believe. I'm simply saying, hey, look, isn't this interesting? Sort it out. Put it together with, with these scriptures that come from different places and say, gosh, this really is interesting. You know? What's going on here? Something's happening. I told you I started this a long time ago when I, you know, the first thing I said, I, I, I think the first thing I said that got people to run out the door, I said, God was not an American. <laughs> You know, you know he, he doesn't live in Alabama and drive a pickup truck, you know. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not the way it is, guys. So, so I went from there. Then when I started telling him that, you know, taking a rib out of Adam was not really making women out of spare ribs, that taking a rib out of Adam means removing an electron from an ATOM, at which time you cause a chain reaction and a replication of creation. And the Bible was telling you that all life began with the splitting of the atom. And then we found that to be very interesting logical. And they, then they really got mad at me out there because I was being logical, you know, and you know, they don't deal with logic. And then we talked about the speed of light in the Bible. The children of light, the tribe of Judah, isn't it curious to you that in the Bible it says that the number of people in that tribe is 186,400, which is the constant speed of light. When you say, who the heck wrote that? Who, wrote, who knew the speed of light 5,000 years ago to put it in a document like that? And then they said, let's make a temple. And they made it with an outer holy room, an inner holy of holies, and they separated the outer and the inner with a veil or a curtain. And when you look in Stedman's Medical Dictionary, your brain has dura mater, which is the outer covering, pia mater, which is the inner most sensitive place, and pia mater and dura mater are separated by arachnoid, which is the web of the curtain of the veil. Here you have an anatomically correct description of the human brain written in a book 5,000 years ago and passed off as the temple. Where, who wrote that? So it's very interesting when we look at these things. But here now, what do we have? You got, you got Iraq, and they're talking about they're going to bomb Iraq, and the Jews in the Palestine, and the Catholics in the Protestants in Israel are shooting each other, and all these things. And what is, is anybody worried about that? No, they're worried about some guy's sex life. He had sex. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. And, 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 and how does the Bible put that? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 30, is in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall be the coming of the Son of Man. And then it says, two shall be in the field. Why don't you look at that, page 802, just, just out of curious. Matthew Pat, chapter 24, verse 38. And see, everything is going on, just like normal, you know? And you know what we're like? We're like a bunch of, did you ever see a bunch of ants? Well, of course you've seen ants. And ants are running around and they're doing this, doo -doo 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 -doo, and there's one ant's grabbing this and the other ant's grabbing that, and they're building this stuff, and they don't know, and they're, they're doing this on the crack of a sidewalk. And they never have any idea that when they're scurrying around doing all these things, that Bigfoot is coming. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> there it is, the whole thing. Was, because, and this is exactly what they say. We don't know that Bigfoot is coming, but you do. Say. And that has a tendency to change everything. Screws everything up. So anyhow, in Matthew 24, 38, it says, look, everybody's running around doing all this stuff. They don't know. And then it says, two shall be in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Do you see that? 24, verse 40. Two shall be in the field. Let me tell you something. This was not written by religious people. Okay, this is written by Greek mythologists, mathematicians, numerologists, and funky people in Greece who put all of this stuff under a deep-coded, um, symbolic type of uh, allegory and so forth and so on, and talked about scientific facts and truths. That's why it's so very interesting. What is it, two working in the field, one shall be taken and the other left? Well, it's very interesting. The field is the mind. In all metaphysics, the field is the mind. Two shall be working in the mind. One shall be taken up and above all of the chaos, but the other will be left. And the one who's going to be left is the one who's left, the one who's operating out of the left side. That's why meditation is so important. And let me say this one more time to you. 
You can do meditation for whatever reason. You can do it for your health. You can do visualization. I'm not, and that's wonderful. And all of these things are great. I don't do that. I'm not into that. That's not simply because it's not my job. My job is simply to teach you meditation so that you can get to God. And meditation so that you can get to God takes a lot of time. It takes approximately 10 seconds. 10 seconds of your time. Find a dark room so that the pineal gland opens up. Take a deep breath. Hold your breath. Shut your eyes and wait for 10 seconds and then leave. And you've done it. That's it. There is nothing more to it than that. Absolutely nothing. There is nobody in this room that would have a hard time holding your breath for 10 seconds. It's getting a little rough for me now, but I mean, in the old days I could do it. But hold your breath for 10 seconds and close your eyes in a dark room and leave. Because it comes to you in a twinkling of an eye. The photon, which is the light that comes through the pineal gland as the messenger particle that interacts with you comes at the constant speed of light, 186,400 miles a second. Faster than the twinkling of an eye. That's all that's required. We have meditation here three nights a week. If you don't come, you don't come. But you can go into your bathroom, shut the light out, and hold your breath for 10 seconds. That you can do. That's all that's required of you. Because when you shut off your breath, you shut off your mind. You don't believe me? Ready? Everybody take a deep breath. At the count of three, we're going to hold it for 10 seconds. And in that period of time, you're not going to think of anything. Probably be a good idea if you shut your eyes, because if you're going to look at me, you're going to think of something. Oh, no, this guy's not. All right, so let's close our eyes and do that. We're going to take a deep breath, and then 10 seconds. On the count of three. One, two, three. OK. When you shut off your breath, you shut off your mind. You don't think. That's all that is required of you. That's it. Let this thing called God have at you for 10 seconds. That's fine, OK? That's the bread. See, and, 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 and that's, what the, that's what the scriptures are trying to talk about. But this is the important thing. If you look at page 804 in the Bible, in Matthew 24, 15, it says, when you see the abomination of desolation, then run to the mountain. Page 804, Matthew 24, 15. It says, Whoever reads this, let them understand. See, when you finally become aware, you know, you're sitting here, but everybody has to wake up because something is happening scientifically on the earth and in the universe that, you, that is changing everything. There is an electromagnetic force that is going to bathe the earth in its light. This isn't stuff, this is NASA knows this. This is stuff that's understanding by scientists. It is coming upon the earth. It's going to change you. You are like a flea on a tennis ball. You're running around the planet earth, which is going 40,000 miles an hour with nobody driving it, and you're looking for security. I'm putting away for security. You're on a tennis ball. It's like somebody hitting you with a racket. You're like a flea going back and forth, hanging on. And so the whole thing is changing now. And you can see the changes all around you and the social aspects of what's going on. And you've got to be aware of it. And you've got to start to harmonize. You've got to start to flow with it. For those of you who are here for the first time today, there is, I believe it's in page 81 of your, your stuff there, your material, or 84, or 83, well, I don't know what it is. It's, uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I'd like you to when you get a chance. But any, it's on page 82. And you know what it is? You know what happened December 11th? Something that really, you probably don't know that this happened, but it did. Scientists in Austria took a photon, and a photon is, is a light particle. And they destroyed it, and it reappeared three feet away. In other words, for the first time, something that was killed came back to life and appeared three feet away. And do you know what is inside of you making you blink your eye and run your, move your hands and think the way you do? Photons. Photons are light particles. When an atom gets excited, it puts off energy called photon. And here they made a demonstration in which the photon was destroyed, and there it appeared three feet away. And so uh, the diagram on how they did this on page 82, and, and I'll be glad to spend time with you. If you want to spend time after this is over, and if you're not aware how this works, please just come on up front, and I'll talk to you, and I'll explain it to you how they did it. It's an amazing thing, an amazing thing. So here then, in Matthew 24, 15, it says, when you see the abomination of desolation, the abomination means the horrible truth that 
90% of your mind is desolate. The horrible truth that the, the beautiful part that God gave you is abandoned, desolate. You've never gone there. You've paid attention to pastors and preachers and churches and politicians, but you've never paid attention to yourself. And so then the beautiful part that God said he wanted you to touch and to make is the right side. The eastern side is desolate. And then who, who made it that way? Who made it desolate? Why is it that you never went there? Why is it that you were never aware that this kingdom is inside of you? And inside of you is the same wonder that is in the universe. They have 12 signs of the zodiac in the universe. You have 12 cranial nerves in your brain. You have the plug to go into the outlet. Say, And what does it say? Look at page 633 of the Bible in Jeremiah chapter 12. And in verse... Ten. In Jeremiah chapter 12 and in verse 10, look what it says. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They've trodden my portion underfoot. They've made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They've made it desolate and being desolate it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate because no man lays it to heart. That's why it's pastors in robes and stained glass windows that have taught you to be afraid of yourself have not told you that there within you is that which is the Christ, which is the Christian, which is the light, which is the universal healing light, which is trying inside of you to bring you up above all of that which is coming down upon the earth in confusion. In Luke 11, 52, Jesus says, Lo, unto you, Lord, you've taken away the key of knowledge because you've not entered in yourselves and then that we're entering in, you enter. So the people then are not ready for this coming light. They're not ready for what's coming upon them, and yet they're in all of this confusion and all of these things happening and all of these changes and all of these traditions breaking down. But what's coming down, now watch me carefully, and we were kidding about it before, what is coming down are photons. And what is a photon? A photon is an angle of light which science said is a messenger particle. The angle of light is a messenger, which you have called angel, the messenger. Okay? And this is what's coming down upon the earth. All light enters the earth on an angle. And so then you look around and you see all of these things. Like we, we, we start to see the in the east and then we're starting to see the shaking of the uh, the stock markets and the financial institutions and so forth and so on. It's just the beginning of the shaking. And it says in, on page 587 in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 14, 4, you shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. How has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. This is what you've got to be prepared for. And, and there's no threat of this. This doesn't say anything bad is coming. This is, the most, this is the greatest time in the history of the universe. Something great is about to happen. Something sensational, beautiful is about to happen. All the dog-eat-dog, competitive type of thing that has made life not very pleasant for so many on this planet is going to come to an end. A whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of living, a whole new way of socialization is coming down from above. Because it's that time. It's that time of Aquarius. It's that time with the man with the pitcher of water. It's that time of new thinking is coming down. And it says, in, in, if you look in page 1011, uh, Revelation chapter 16. I won't keep you hopping, but I, I just wanted to, to show you a, you know, a couple of things. And then, huh? 1011, Revelation chapter 16. And it says in Revelation chapter 16, and every, verse 20, and every island fled away. 20, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And the island is the place where one, one flees to, to hide from the one who pursues. There's no place to run. There's no mountain to hide out. Where are you going to hide? Where's anybody going to hide? And why should you have to hide if all that's required of you is to get on this line, photon, light, and get on a plane of energy through the through the pineal gland of the brain, to be in harmony. Why should you have to? And you don't have to. There's no place where 
where children can hide from drugs today. There's no place where people can hide from violence today. And, and, and here what's being said is that there is going to be no place for the entire population of the world to hide. You know, I was thinking of, I'm sitting there last night, and my mind does crazy things like this, but I was thinking of 20 years ago, this world was populated with dogs and cats. Every one of them, except for prison, has died. But you know what? The whole world is populated with dogs and cats. Are they the same one? <laughs> or are they all new ones? Because every 20 years, a whole new batch is here. Aren't they? And every 80 years, a whole new batch of us is here. Just think of that. A hundred years ago, this world was filled. The world was totally populated. Everybody that was here was gone. Here we are. Are we then? <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. There's no extra charge for that because <laughs> that's a that's a heavy that's a that's a heavy duty thought. But what basically in Revelation chapter 16, verse 21, and this is the last scripture we'll do for a while, and we'll talk. There fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Hail is solid water. And you know what water is in the Bible? Water is truth. And the hail that falls down is truth that can hurt. You know what I mean? Truth that can break down and change. But it says the men were angry because their traditional ways were, were falling apart. This is the result of the seventh angle of light, which we call the seventh angel. And that seventh angle connects to what you call the seventh chakra in Hindu, or Hindu religion, the seventh chakra, okay? Now, a lot of people say, well, especially the people up on the street, I say, oh, stay away from that stuff, stay away from that stuff, oh, that's bad stuff, you know, and it can't have anything to do with chakras, oh my God, that's Hindu, oh, that's evil, that's cult, mm -hmm. not like us. <laughs> my father, that's right, son. Let me look at the word of God. The word of God. <laughs> now, do this with me, would you? They get all freaked out because what the Hindus teach is that the energy rises up through the seven chakras, impacts the pineal gland of the brain, and then throws open the right hemisphere, and that's called Kundalini. You can get it at most Italian restaurants now. I think. <laughs> but anyhow, I have a little Kundalini with the. Go with me to the book of uh, Revelation. Let me show you something on page 1005. And look how strange this is. Because what you're going to look at now is the book of... How many of you, you know, when you were children, raised up in a good Christian home, and a good Catholic home, like I, and they said, you want your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? That was, that's what we wanted. Didn't we all want to have our name written in the Book of Life? Is your name in the book? You know, and that was the thing. But let me show you the Book of Life. Come cool. 1005, Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand, that's the right hemisphere of the brain, of him that sat on the throne, that's the higher mind, a book, the book of life, written on the back side, which is the spine, and sealed with seven seals, which is the seven chakras. The book of life of the Bible is Kundalini. And it's in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. Take it to your pastor. Share it with him. <laughs> Be glad to hear. But it's true. It's true. Okay. Now, the experiment in Austria was the first time that Earth people like you and I saw a polarity change. Okay? And what happened? Real quick now, watch up here for just a second because I'm going to show you something. In Austria, this is what they did. They took photon A and photon B and photon C. They entangled photon B and C. Then they brought photon B into A. When photon B came into A, it destroyed A. As soon as it destroyed A, it caused C to change its polarity, and A became C. You know, which, I, I, you know, you know how we got along to understand this? Let's say A is you, B is Jesus, and C is is God. Jesus and God were entangled. I can buy that. Jesus came into you. I can buy that. You no longer live, but it's the Christ who lives within you. I can buy that. And once Jesus came into you, you became one with God. I can buy that. Not bad. Of course, the guy in Austria never thought of this, but that's his problem. 
But that's the way it works. So you could prove that entire operation. You could prove that entire thing. Now, what I want you to look at, if you, if you had the material, and if you look at page 85 in, in, in the material that, that we gave you, OK? On page 85 in the material is a uh, information on magnetism, which shows you that magnetism is one of the fundamental forces of nature. At the very, very top of the page, it says magnetism, one of the fundamental forces of nature. Okay? Now, if you'll just go from there to page 71 of that material that we gave you, and when you think and you hold in your mind that magnetism is one of the fundamental forces of nature, on page 71, you see gauge boson, messenger particles, carrying the fundamental forces of nature. The most ex common example is photon. Photon. And photon was the part of the Austrian experiment. Photon is the angle of light, which for all of your life in church, you've, you refer to them as angels. Okay? Photon is the light within you. Remember, if it is photon, excuse me, if it is light, it is photon. The Bible said God is light. That means God is photon. Does that mean, you know, honk if you love photon? Not necessarily. But what it does mean is that if you understand the principle, how would something like God communicate with earth? Photon. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Photon. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Photon. All comes in the realm of light. Okay? And all comes in the realm of this photon. And now we find out these are the messenger particles. Okay, which carry the fundamental forces of nature. All right? Now, if you look back at page 85 at that magnetism again, you'll see that light passing through a transparent material, such as crystal, which is azosia, is sensitive to the behavior of the atoms in the material, such as atoms in you and I, made of atoms. Now, notice that it says an externally applied magnetic field, which would be the book of Revelation, can influence the behavior in atoms, which in turn affects the behavior of light. In other words, an externally applied magnetic field coming down from the above can influence the atoms in you and change your behavior. That's exactly what is happening. So, I mean, you have a scientific principle here of light and magnetism, which says that an externally applied magnetic field from above can influence the behavior in atoms in us, which in turn affects the behavior of light, which is the mind. Okay. Then down below that, you see something called the Faraday effect about polarized light traveling in the direction of the magnetic field. Now, you have to understand something. Magnetic fields change. And they said probably one of the biggest magnetic uh, changes that they had called magnetic chaos was at the time of the dinosaurs. And when it happened, that was the end of that. And they're not anticipating anything near that. Okay? Well, let's go on with this. I gave you something new this morning, which was page 89. All right? And on page 89, there are several facts recorded for you that I want you to keep because you should be aware of this. And these are the types of things you know, your kids probably are learning in school. These are what is really the kingdom of God. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with church stuff. It has to do with reality. Look what it says here uh, in 89. The Earth's magnetic field is known as the geomagnetic field, and that the motion of electric charges in the outer core produces that field. The next paragraph is important. The geomagnetic field periodically reverses direction. That is, the Earth's north and south magnetic poles switch places. It's in the second paragraph on page 89, the very first sentence. The geomagnetic field periodically reverses direction. That is, the Earth's north and south magnetic poles switch places. Do you see that? So these things happen. These are the things when you turn on the learning channel or the discovery channel or some guy on there, and, you know, and he's telling you about this stuff. Almost every night you can watch these guys, and the scientists are telling people about that. The learning channel recently had an hour and a half program about the coming magnetic chaos. 
But too many people were watching to see if uh, Marsha Lewinsky and uh, you know, whatever her name is. And so, Anna, you know, that, that's not important. But these are important things, okay? Now, the next paragraph, the last paragraph, the Earth's magnetic field, you see the third paragraph? The Earth's magnetic field also extends into space beyond the atmosphere. That's called the magnetosphere, and it interacts with the flow of charged particles from the sun called the solar wind, and the, you know, the Van Allen belt and so forth. When you go just below that, it talks about the equinoxes and how there's a shift. The, the, the points of the equinoxes shift extremely slowly, about one degree, called the precession of the in equinoxes, which is caused by a slight change in the direction of the axis of rotation. And then finally, magnetic storms. Um, at the bottom there, are solar flares calling magnetic storms, electrons, and so forth. And then there's an article there about the Milky Way. Now, here's something interesting for you, and you'll find it in your bunch of stuff. Okay? Do you remember, in the Bible, and th this is all documented for you, it says manna came from heaven. Right? Now we say, heaven is in you. Okay? So that would be from the brain. So we look up manna. And you, you have it in that documentation. Manna is sugar. It's a, it's a saccharin. It's a, it's a sugary substance. OK. So then if we're going to look at sugar, let's go to the brain and see what brain sugar is. So we go to brain sugar, and brain sugar is galactose. OK? Galactose, galact means milk, and toast means sugar. And so brain sugar is a milky, sweet substance. And what does the Bible say? I will take you out of a land of bondage up to a land flowing with milk and honey. Galactose. All right? And w what I wanted to show you that for is because if you look at that and then realize, I have a Milky Way in my head. Well, that you do. Galactose. But in addition to that, you live in a galaxy called the Milky Way. And now, if you look at the bottom there, you'll see the Milky Way wrapper, not the kind we had in the movies, but the Milky Way wrapper is made up of gamma rays. A mysterious halo of high energy gamma rays envelops the Milky Way, astronomers discover. The gamma rays bathe the galaxy with a glow that's invisible to human eyes. Researchers can't explain where it comes from, but they may produce by the sum of the universe's elusive dark matter. Ooh. You know what's neat about that? Let me show you something you've never seen. Some of you have never seen before. Go to page 747 in those little Bibles. And on page 747 in, in the little Bibles, look at the book of um, Amos. I want, I want you to get there because this is something you, many of you have never seen before. Let me know when you got there. Everybody raise your hand. You there? Okay. 747, the book of Amos. I want to just do something real quick for you, and then we'll get out of here. In 747, in the book of Amos, Amos chapter 5, you there? Verse 18. Woe unto... Now, just keep in mind about the gamma and coming in the Milky Way, the universe's elusive dark matter. What does it say? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And look at verse 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? And that's where the matter comes from. Okay? So, now, this is what I wanted to share with you. I'll let you go. And this is what's so interesting to me. Look at page, think of yourself. This, just to stay with me for a few minutes, think of yourself and how important and how critical this is. If you and what goes on inside of you is the same as what goes on inside of the universe. Now remember, uh, you, you're finding that the Ga Dr. Gary Toller of, the, of, of Goddard Space Lab for NASA said that just like the human brain, only 10% of the universe is visible. 90% or the right side is invisible. So then you're living inside of a, of a brain, which is the universe, which is a duplicate of your brain. And that's why the Bible said, you know, make the, make the temple, you know, in the same way the brain is made. Now, let me ask you a question. 
Look at you. Say, look at the way you have changed. Look at the way you change, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you act. You're here. If the universe is now going through a meditative process, this kundalini business, and is going to experience the same thing that you have experienced, look at what is going to happen. Look at the change in your life, and then magnify it as to what is going to be the change in the life of the universe and the life of the planet Earth, because this has happened, okay? Now, go to page 64 of that material, and I wanted to show you something that is from the New York Times. Understanding the hormone of darkness, melatonin, okay? You there? If you look at the right-hand corner at the bottom, after traveling through nerves in the spine, there are the resistors, the signal reaches the pineal gland. In the absence of light signals, the gland begins production of melatonin. So what they're saying in the New York Times is that there's an energy that rises up the spine, and of course we say it goes through the seven, and then it hits the pineal gland where there is this tremendous explosion of light, okay? So what goes on within us what I'm proposing to you is the same thing as to what goes on in the universe. There are 12 cranial nerves in your brain. There are 12 zodiacal signs of those 12 constellations in the universe, okay? If you meditate, the energy rises through the spine, okay, hits the pineal gland, and throws open the right hemisphere. You become enlightened. Now what I'm going to propose to you is that the universe is doing the same thing. And that's why this magnetic shift that it's coming upon will truly unleash onto this earth the power of what you call God. And this is why I'm saying that, okay? If you'll go back with me to the actual discoveries which began with Pegasus, we can see why this magnetic chaos predicted could certainly be the return of the white horse, okay? Now, okay. If you'll go to page 88 of this material, and if you don't have this, if you'd share it with somebody so that they could see it, and, you know, I'll do it quickly. I'm going to show you. Remember, the very first thing that occurred was in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, it said, in Revelation 19.20, And behold, heaven opened, and I saw a white horse, and he that sat upon him was faithful and true. And we then looked for something to happen that had never happened before. There's only one white horse in the heavens, and that's Pegasus. And on October 20th, 1995, the scientists in Switzerland saw a sun star that was a twin of ours and a planet circling around it. It had never happened before. That was the sign. That was the sign. And you have the documentation of it on the back of page 88. Didier Quilo's Michael Meyer in Switzerland discovered star 51 Pegasus. And I've even given you the coordinates of it. But not only did that happen, but it says in the Bible, in the very next sentence, that following behind him were thousands of other on white horses. And we looked and we saw, and you have the documentation here, that scientists then found in Pegasus thousands of stars swarming like bees to a hive, moving towards the Earth like, like to a great globular cluster. So it was there. This happened when you, you weren't paying any attention to it. And it's in, it's, it's, it's in your papers here. You have it here. It's in your documentation here. Look on page 87. Look on page 87 when I'm telling you. On page 87, it says, uh, it's from the Associated Press, thousands of stars rushing towards the core of a globular cluster. You see that? Look at it. And, 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 and then on the third paragraph, how far the stars are moving, whether they are moving toward us or away from us. Look at the second paragraph, like bees swarming to their hive. This is really happening while you're sitting here. Sorry. So we saw that. Okay? So then let's say, and just, 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 just go with me, let's say that that was the beginning then. Pegasus was the beginning, and let's place it at the Moldara chakra at the sacrum on page 88, okay? All right, so then as we continue to meditate, now what I want you to do, I want you to make believe that you're the universe. You're not a human being, you're the universe. You're going into meditation, and the universe is looking for the same thing that you look at as a human being in meditation. So you got this Pegasus, you got this first awareness. Now the second thing that happens, as you meditate, the energy moves up to the second chakra, which is the genital area, the planetary discovery is 
in, uh, in this Anastana sh chakra, Virgo, the virgin mind, the branch. Because that's the way it was discovered. That was the next one that was discovered, Virgo. And then we continue to meditate, and we move up to the next chakra, which is Manpurka, the solar plexus. The planetary discovery is Ursa, mother and child, assembled together, the flock. So now the, the universe, now this is the universe that's in meditation. This is the universe where the energy is moving upward. And we continue our, our meditation, and we move up to Anhata, which is the, shark, the, the heart chakra, and the planetary discovery is in Cancer, that which is encircling, that which is holding. And the two primary stars in Cancer are Precipe, the manger, and Asilis, the donkey. So we continue our energy, we continue our meditation, and we move up to the throat chakra, which is Boots, which is Vasudhi chakra, Boots, the coming one, that he comes, the Christ consciousness comes. And then we continue our meditation, and we move up to, to Ajna. Did you ever say that? Will you give me Ajna? That's the head shot. We move up to Ajna, and there is Andromeda, the chained woman. Where's the woman's live movement coming from? Why? It's right here. The breaking of the chains, the breaking of the bondage, the breaking of the chains from Andromeda, the freedom of the spirit. And finally, our meditation takes us to Sahasara, the pineal gland. And there you'll see, and even on the back page, the seventh planet was discovered in the constellation Leo by George Gatewood of Baltimore. We reach the point now where we can now be dispatched from the pineal gland to the higher realms of consciousness. We've come to the end of the journey, not the end of the world, the end of the journey. And I'm asking you now, is the universe making the same trip? Because look, these, all of these things were discovered. Between October 1995 and a few months ago, all of these were discovered in that rotation. Never happened before in the history of the world. Never happened before. And so then we, we reach the end, and, I, and, and yet there was another discovery to be made. What, what, what would the universe do to kind of show us that it is in, it's flowing in this harmony that we're... The end, a planet that would be in harmony with the scriptures, and the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall rise incorruptible. We shall be changed. But there is no trumpet, is there, in the zodiac. So what could it be the very next, the very next planet that was discovered after Leo the Pineal was discovered by William Cochran and Artie Hatzis of Texas, Joffrey Marcy, and Paul Butler of San Francisco, 16 Cygnus B, Cygnus the Trumpeter Swan. <laughs> That's eight. So now if you're, if you're in meditation, you've reached that point of silence, what are you looking for now? What you're looking for now is a new mind. You're looking for an enlightenment, aren't you? You're looking for a new consciousness, aren't you? Because you've meditated. What I'm putting forth to you is that now the universe is doing the same thing that you do when you're meditation. The universe is having its kundalini, and you've got the documentation of it. You've got the proof of it, but then even bigger proof, because they found the ninth planet consciousness. The only place, if it was going to be consciousness it could be, would be in the crown. And I gave it to you. The ninth planet was discovered, and you've got the documentation in Corona Borealis, the northern crown. And so now the universe said, OK, everybody. You meditate. You had your kundalini. The universe has meditated. It's had its kundalini. It moved up to the seven, to the pineal. It stopped in the silence of the trumpet. It moved on to the new consciousness. And so now you wait for the explosion of the single eye of the pineal gland to flow with melatonin. You look for the single eye inside of yourself. You look for that which is the pineal gland to be the receptor of the light and the giver of the light. And you look for the melatonin to flow into your body. Well, the universe did the same thing because right after they discovered the ninth planet, which was the crown, Hubble showed us the pineal gland of God. the hourglass nebula, 
the pineal gland of God, and it was on the front page of National Geographic of April 1997. You see that, Charles? Okay. Now, when you reach the pineal gland in your meditation, you expect all things to change. You expect there to be a complete change in your body. You expect there to be a complete healing in your body. You expect there to be a time of total enlightenment and understanding. All of the things which have hindered you to be thrown down. All of the things that have hurt you to be broken down. All of this explosion to be a new time of understanding. And remember, remember, it was René Descartes of France who said the place in your body where God and you meet the place of the soul is the pineal gland of the brain. And then I showed you, after the traveling of the seven planets and then into the planet of the restoration of consciousness of corona, then <coughs> Hubble showed you this. What is it? A coincidence? Is all of this a coincidence? And it's not a, there's not a priest or a minister or an evangelist involved in this. It's all done by the scientists of the world. The astronomers or as we put it in our Christmas songs, the Magi, the wise men. Because certainly the people who are behind the pulpit are not the wise men. <laughs> <laughs> and let me leave you with this, okay? Let me leave you with this, and I want everybody to consider this. You saw this? You traveled with me through the planets. You traveled with me. You've got the names of the sign. You want to call the scientists up and say, is this guy full of baloney or did you really do this? Go ahead. You can go on the internet and find these guys. You can go on television. You can see Joffrey Marcy and all of these guys. And then you saw Hubble. And you saw the single eye, the pineal gland of God. And I'll leave you with this. Everybody. Please, I want you to recite with me the word of God. Go to page 28. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, brother. Come on, Billy Bob. <laughs> Go to page 28, all right? In Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Have you found it? Huh? You saw, did you see the Hubble picture of the pineal gland of God, the eye in the sky? Did you see it? Genesis chapter 32, verse 30. Jacob says, And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Is that a coincidence too? And as Rich Doppler showed us the exact duplicate of how the single eye taken by Hubble fits with the harmony of Apollo, I shall show you some absolutely amazing things connected with that. And the music of the spheres, and the music of Apollo, and the geometric harmony of the universe is now singing a song to you. It is the true, true kingdom of God. And it is about to bathe the earth in all of its glory and all of its power. And the breezes from this great storm of light have already touched the earth, and you've seen the results of so much of it. And the fact that you're here is a result that it has touched you. So don't think you're alone in reaching the pineal and exploring all of this new wonder. Your universe has just reached its. And now the enlightenment is about to occur. OK? And remember something. Don't be afraid of it, because this is God. And the word God is simply the word good with an O missing. This is a good change. Don't frighten anybody by it. Armageddon is not God throwing fire on the earth. It's that which comes down from the higher realms of the mind to burn up all the things that have hurt you. Be prepared for it. Flow in harmony with it. Give yourself 10 seconds in the bathroom. It's all that's required. Nobody even has to know. Okay? Good. Thanks a lot. <laughs>